Hello, I'm Jeff Hajik, the owner and founder of Velaction Continuous Improvement. I'd like to thank you for your interest in my continuous improvement development system. Some elite companies pass from a strong continuous improvement culture to one that drives world-class performance. These top-tier companies continually stay ahead of the competition and regularly make game-changing breakthroughs. This final phase of the continuous improvement model is an extremely interesting one. It does not have a lot of supporting sections as there are not many specific things that separate a good or great company from a world-class one. That just means that you can't add new ingredients like A3 reports to the mix and become world-class. Rather, world-class companies come into being because of their ability to do all the little things extremely well. What this means, in simpler terms, is that this phase is more about doing all the things you have learned better than it is about learning new things. In the early phases, it is relatively easy to distinguish where someone is on their journey by what they are doing in their organization. If there are red tags and common cards in use, you can see a measure of progress that means that they have at least started ramping up. A3 reports generally mean the company is well along its continuous improvement journey and is focusing on keeping momentum. On the other hand, once a company enters a momentum phase, you can't simply do a walkthrough and inventory the tools that are in use to tell if a company is world-class. Instead, you have to look at performance. Do the financial numbers tell the story of an elite company? Now, there can be some debate about whether profit is the only indicator of a successful company. But to be clear, Companies cannot exist if they are not profitable. The owners may have a social agenda and want to share the wealth the company creates, but a more financially sound company has more options to fulfill that desire. But there is more to it than just squeezing dollars out of people. How a company earns is important, morally, but it also matters from the profitability standpoint as well. Respecting employees, and customers for that matter, is not just the right thing to do. It is also the profitable thing to do. Taking advantage of either group may be of benefit in the short term, but in the end, adversarial relationships with either group are incompatible with long-term success. And world-class companies are built to last. Beyond the financials, though, world-class companies build stellar reputations. Is filling open positions tough because there are too many good candidates to choose from? is a company emulated by others. Are news stories covering the company's accomplishments commonplace? Are there case studies about it? If you answered yes to these questions, you may be a world-class company. Obviously, getting to this point takes hard work. It takes commitment. It takes discipline. But the benefits are substantial. Toyota's reputation for world-class quality bolsters its sales. Google's reputation for how it treats its employees has applicants lining up to work there. That means low turnover costs and a virtual guarantee that they will have the perfect person apply for every job opening. A reputation for world-class performance is not only the result of having an edge over the competition, it is also yet another advantage over them. Phase 7 Principles There are just two new principles in Phase 7, but they are big ones. Principle, expect to win. Confidence is a key principle for world-class companies. They don't concede victory to other dominant players in the market. Granted, there is a fine line between confidence and overconfidence, World-class companies take on challenges knowing that their systems will get them there even if they don't know the path yet. Principle. Think big. World-class companies take on projects that change the world. That's not to say they engage in fantasy projects. But their confidence lets them take on game-changing projects that others would not even attempt. Progress in the world is a mixture of evolutionary change and revolutionary leaps forward. World-class companies are well positioned to exhibit the grand thinking that changes the world. 
about phase seven. Phase seven is really the ultimate goal for a company. It is to be recognized by others, customers, competitors, vendors, employees, as world-class. It's not easy. Most who try will fall short. They may think that they are great, but they don't earn that view from others. That's not to say that you can't be world-class in obscurity. It can happen. But for the most part, when a company is world-class, word gets out. Vendors like working with you. Employees talk the company up, and the applicant pool is outstanding. Customers love you. So phase seven is really a target. Shooting for it means phase six companies are doing great. And for those that get there, it is not a permanent residence. You've got to keep working at it. It is easy to lose world-class status. In all the other phases, I offer you help. If you are in phase seven, you probably don't need it. Keep in touch though. I like to learn. I'm sure you'd have a thing or two you could teach me. Finally, congratulations. I still wish you well on your lean journey. No matter how far you get, there's always more to learn. Good luck and keep up the great work.